On behalf of Father Bill Richter and the congregation at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, I'd like to welcome you to this order of service for the noonday. I'm Jackson Hearn, the Director of Music here at Good Shepherd, and it's my privilege to lead us through these prayers for this day commemorating St. Simon and St. Jude. Our meditation is presented by Barbara Hemphill, with whom I've had the pleasure of leading our Taze services for more than 10 years. During this time of social distancing and COVID precautions, we are not having our monthly services in the style of Taze. We are, however, returning to live in-person worship. And this Sunday, November 1st, we will have both the 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. nave services. You can join us live or here on YouTube where we are live streaming our services. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm for today is Psalm 66. Be joyful in God, all ye lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and with, will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beast with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Here is a reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us 
was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown by, about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way unto him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building up itself in love. Thanks be to God. Today we commemorate two apostles, St. Simon and Jude. Beyond their being apostles, little is known about them. In fact, we know more about who they were not than about who they were. This apostle Simon was not Simon Peter, the famous leader of the original 12 disciples. He was probably called Simon the Zealot just to distinguish him from his better known friend. This Jude, whose name was really Judas, was not Judas Iscariot, the infamous disciple who betrayed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jude is also probably not the author of the epistle by that name. Finally, Simon and Jude are probably not the brothers of Jesus with the same names mentioned in the Gospel of Mark. So how can we honor and derive some meaning from the lives of these two men who ministered in the obscurity of ordinary life, neither famous nor infamous? Their lives are an historical mystery and they're almost lost in church tradition too. I couldn't even find a listing for Simon the Zealot in my dictionary of patron saints. I finally found an article online mentioning him as patron of those who saw wood and those who tan and curry animal hides. Appropriately, he is patron to people who work behind the scenes. But Jude is another story. Because Jude was often confused with Judas Iscariot, people rarely invoked his intercession for fear of praying to Jesus' betrayer. It is said that only those who were hopeless and extremely desperate would take the risk of calling on Jude. So he became the patron saint of lost causes and desperate situations. Jude, the forgotten apostle, is the saint who picks up prayers that have slipped through the cracks, the cries that have gone unheard, the pain no one has noticed, the atom of faith for a miracle. We cannot really remember St. Simon and Jude because there's so little history to recall. But we can honor them today by emulating their compassion for the hidden and the lost, by keeping our eyes and our hearts open to a hurting world, by blessing the mundane and the overlooked. With St. Simon, 
pay attention to people who work behind the scenes and so are rarely appreciated. With St. Jude, listen for fraying faith. You may find, like the patron saint of lost causes, you, yes you, are someone's last desperate hope for a miracle. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send out your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we thank you for the glorious company of the apostles, and especially on this day for Simon and Jude, that we pray that, as they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so we may with ardent devotion make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.